Hello and welcome to week three in our Life Together series. Today we're going to be talking a bit about living in the Word together. In a life group, the primary focus is to help each other grow as followers of Jesus. At Chapel Street, you've heard us talk about this as the discipleship pathway, where our lives and purposes become increasingly centered around Him and His kingdom. And one of the key ways that we grow in our discipleship to Jesus is through the study of God's Word. And this happens not only in our our personal readings, but also within the community of our life groups, where we are collectively reading and discussing and applying God's words as we seek to live in the way of Jesus. We believe that spiritual growth doesn't just happen in isolation. It thrives in community, and the role of God's Word in your life group is foundational for this growth. I recognize at the outset that those of you in your life group may have had a lot of different experiences when it comes to reading the Bible. Perhaps your approach to the Bible in the past has primarily been to see it as a divine rule book or an instruction manual. Others have experienced it as a series of phrases or ideas that have largely been ripped from their context and serve as a sort of spiritual one-liner or inspirational saying. Still others have experienced the Bible as something to be read and explained by someone else, a pastor or a teacher who you view as having more experience or education and can help understand the meaning. And while there are reasons and even benefits for each of these experiences of reading and interacting with the Bible, they certainly don't capture the fullness of, of all that God's Word is intended to be. Scripture is far more than a collection of inspirational sayings or a theology textbook. It's a comprehensive story of God, of His creation, of how humanity was created to partner with God and to care for and cultivate this world. It's about how we as humans have ruined this partnership with God when we chose to define for ourselves what is good and what is evil, but also how God is moving and working to restore us in our world through Jesus. In the words of of the Bible Project, which is incidentally a great resource for reading and understanding the Bible, the Bible is one unified story leading to Jesus. It's made up of a number of different genres, and it's telling different parts of the story, but it's all leading us to Jesus and to the promise of God to restore what's been broken when sin entered into the narrative. As a life group, together you will want to read and interact with and seek and understand and apply what you're hearing in God's Word. In his letter to the Colossians, Paul describes this desire for the community of Jesus followers this way. He says, Let the Word of Christ dwell richly among you, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another through psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Paul expresses a very similar desire to the Ephesians. He says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. I pray that he may grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power in your inner being through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and width and height and depth of God's love, and to know Christ's love that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. In both cases, Paul's desires for us as followers of Jesus is that we would dwell or that we would remain in, inhabit the truth of how much God loves us, how we're redeemed through faith in Jesus. And because of his victory over sin, and guilt, and that we ought to live our God-given purpose doing the very work of restoration in a broken world. Paul describes some of what we experience when we engage with God's Word together in community with the story of Jesus as teaching and as admonishing. In other words, Paul understands our interactions with God's words are to be formative and instructive. It serves to help us grow our God-given purpose, and we're intended to see it as an authority in our life as we live in the way of Jesus. These aspects of God's Word in our lives are defined a bit more when Paul's talking to a young leader in the church in Ephesus by the name of Timothy. 
He writes this in 2 Timothy, he says, All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. Notice that Paul makes it clear that what we read in the Bible isn't just human wisdom, but rather it's inspired by God. This is the reason why we can view Scripture as trustworthy and authoritative. It forms and shapes us to be men and women who are growing to more closely resemble Jesus. These verses provide us with some great approaches to reading and studying God's Word in, in a life group. And whether we're reading personally or in community together, we can ask ourselves and each other, what did we read that is intended to teach us, to rebuke us or to call us out, to correct us, to show us where we're off and to train us on how to live rightly before God and with others? God has revealed himself to us in his word and he invites us into a deeper knowledge of him as we experience him in his story. While a life group is a great place to deepen relationships with each other, and we want you to do that, that isn't the end goal. It's intended to be a place where we grow in our faith, and that's not possible without the truth of God's Word speaking into our lives. And to that end, as your life group continues to meet going forward, I want to encourage you to prioritize reading and discussing God's Word as a part of your regular time together. The time that you spend together talking about life is important, but we need the guidance and encouragement and challenge and purpose that's found in the pages of Scripture. There are a number of ways that our life groups study God's Word together. Some groups will revisit a passage that was studied in, in the previous week's sermon and dig deeper in to understand and apply the Scripture passage. Other groups choose a book of the Bible that they're going to read through together and study together. And still others will use a, a curriculum or a video series that dives into a topic like relationships or money or doubt and study what the Bible teaches us on each of these. All of these options to engage and study the Bible together in community are beneficial. And you'll want to spend some time together as a group considering which approach you want to begin with. Additionally, one of the benefits and opportunities that being a part of a life group is intended to provide us with is not only the shared experiences that we have of reading and studying and discussing God's Word, but also encouraging each of us to establish a daily rhythm of, of Scripture in our personal lives and bringing those insights and observations into your community with your life group. If you need help getting started, whether it's a group study uh, that you'll work through together, or if you would like some resources for a per uh, personal devotional reading plan, our groups department at Chapel Street can provide you with options for growing in your engagement with Scripture. As a group, here are a few questions uh, to begin your conversation with. What has been your experience with reading and, and studying the Bible? What have you found to be helpful and valuable and what has been difficult for you or even discouraging? When Paul wrote to Timothy and said, all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching and for rebuking, correcting and training and righteousness so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Where have you experienced these different qualities of God's word? How do these different purposes impact the way in which you engage with the Bible, both personally, but then also corporately as a life group? And finally, take some time as a group to discuss what would be most helpful for, for you and where you're at in your faith. Maybe studying a book of the Bible or, or the sermon series questions, a video curriculum. What's the next step for you? Now, as a group, I want you to keep the Apostle Paul's words to the Colossians at the front of your hearts and minds and be a community where you let the word of Christ dwell richly among you.